The movie opens in 1914 New York City, where a sick young girl named Trudy Etterly gazes out the window. She notices thick smoke rising from the nearby sea. After a moment, she returns to her bed as her mother, Anna, and her elder sister Meg come in to check on her. Trudy asks about the smoke and Anna explains that a ferry caught fire while approaching the shore, resulting in a tragic loss of life, especially among women who could not swim. As Trudy's condition worsens, the family calls their doctor, Weiss. When Trudy's father, Henry Etterly, comes home in the evening, Anna shares the grim news about Trudy's health. Dr. Weiss then speaks to them, saying that Trudy is struggling against measles and likely will not survive the night. In the midst of this heartbreaking situation, Anna shares her desire for their children to learn how to swim. She wants them to be safe and never face the same fate as those who perished in the burning ferry. Henry hesitates, worried about societal norms, but Anna convinces him of its importance. Just then, hungry Trudy comes downstairs, surprising her family by defying the doctor's predictions, as she now seems to be healing. Her unexpected appearance fills the room with joy, and they embrace her tightly, relieved and grateful for this moment of hope. As Trudy begins to heal, Henry starts teaching his other two children, Meg and Henry Jr., how to swim. However, the doctor advises Trudy to stay away from the water to protect her ears, so Henry encourages her to find other hobbies. Frustrated, Trudy chooses to play the guitar and sing. As she practices, her music starts to annoy both her father and the neighbors. One evening, after hearing her strumming and singing, Henry finally relents and agrees to let her try swimming. The next day, he takes the family to the beach. To keep her safe, he ties a rope around Trudy while she wades into the water. At first, she feels frightened, but with encouragement from Meg, Trudy gathers her courage and ventures further into the waves. Time passes, and Trudy has now learned the basics of swimming. One day, they attend a men's selection competition for the Olympics. As Trudy watches the boys swim, she encourages Meg to join the race, believing that her sister's speed surpasses theirs. However, the coach overhears them and mocks them, suggesting they should race against dogs instead. Anna confronts the coach, scolding him for his rude comments. Later that evening, Anna announces her decision for Meg and Trudy to join the swim team so they can compete with other girls. Henry laughs off the idea, insisting that there are no opportunities for girls in swimming. The next morning, Anna takes her daughters to watch a girls' swim team practice. There, she meets the team leader, Charlotte Epstein, known as Epi. After observing the girls in the water, Charlotte decides to invite Meg to join the team. However, she hesitates about Trudy feeling that her swimming skills are not strong enough. Anna steps in, emphasizing Trudy's ability to learn quickly and her determination. After some persuasion, Epi agrees to let Trudy practice, but only if she keeps the boiler fed with coal all day. Anna accepts the terms determined to give her daughters the opportunity to swim. At home, Anna informs Henry about the fees for the swimming classes, but he refuses to pay. Determined to ensure her daughters learn how to swim, Anna takes up stitching to cover the costs of their lessons. Meanwhile, Trudy works hard, feeding the boiler with coal and patiently waiting for her chance to swim over the next few days. Recognizing her determination, the coach decides to let Trudy swim and makes an announcement to her team saying that the last girl to finish the race will have to take care of the boiler. Without any prior practice, Trudy joins the race and initially comes in last. Accepting her duty without complaint, she starts to improve after receiving guidance from the coach. Over the following days, she begins to outpace the other girls and also takes the opportunity to practice her lessons in the sea during her free time. After a few days, the team receives exciting news about an incredible opportunity for girls to compete in a swimming race for the very first time in their city. Both Trudy and Meg eagerly sign up. The coach encourages Meg, who is skilled at swimming, to aim for victory. However, to everyone's surprise, after a shaky start, Trudy manages to win the race, showcasing her hard work and determination. 
After that, Trudy continues to excel in various swimming competitions, breaking records from state to national levels. She gains increasing recognition, while Meg lags behind, distracted by the excitement of newfound love in her life. One evening, as Trudy and Meg return home, they discover guests waiting for them. It turns out that Henry has invited some fellow German descendants to arrange a marriage for Trudy. To their shock, when Trudy suggests they should first find a match for Meg, her mother reveals that Henry has already found a German butcher as a match for her. Following this, Henry insists that Trudy accompany Horst, the young man he has chosen for her, to the seaside. There, in an effort to escape this unwanted situation, the two sisters decide to jump into the sea, startling Horst and making him flee. Days later, at the butcher shop, James Sullivan, a member of AOU, who is sponsoring women swimmers for the 1924 Paris Olympics, visits Henry to share the exciting news that Trudy has been selected for the competition. However, Henry shows little interest and dismisses the news casually. Later, Trudy and the other girls meet their coach Jabez Wolf, who has made several unsuccessful attempts to swim across the English Channel, a narrow body of water that separates southern England from northern France and is known for the challenging swimming conditions due to cold temperatures and strong currents. He will be in charge of their safety during the journey to Paris. Wolf enforces strict rules, preventing the girls from training on the ship for three weeks while the boys' team practices without restrictions. Despite the girls complaining, Wolf remains indifferent to their concerns. This lack of practice impacts Trudy's performance. At the Olympics, while the men's team wins the gold medal, Trudy only manages to secure a bronze. In other events, she even struggles to finish in the top three. When she returns home, she discovers her trophies packed away in a box. Without any significant achievements to showcase, Trudy understands that funding for women's swimming and her career could diminish. As a result, she reluctantly decides to leave her trophies packed away in the box. Additionally, she learns from her brother that Meg is marrying a man chosen by their father. As she talks to Meg, Trudy realizes she has no choice but to marry the man chosen by their father. She emphasizes that, despite their trophies and titles, they won't hold any value in their town, and they will likely end up living ordinary lives like any other girls. Trudy sees her sister as a source of inspiration, and she observes her sister's decline in life. Feeling lost, Trudy begins assisting at her father's shop. One day, a group of girls approaches her to express their admiration. They quickly leave after calling Trudy their hero and explaining that she is the reason their parents now allow them to swim. One day, while wandering around the beach fair, Trudy sees Bill Burgess, the second swimmer to successfully cross the English Channel, arriving naked, leading to his quick capture by the nearby police. Inspired by his presence, Trudy feels a deep desire to swim again but keeps her feelings hidden. The next day, Meg marries Carl, the man chosen by their father, while Trudy gazes at the sea. Knowing her sister's desire, Meg encourages Trudy to pursue her dreams. The next day, Trudy visits Epi, who supports her in approaching James for sponsorship to swim the English Channel. Initially skeptical, James agrees to sponsor her, but sets a challenge. She must swim from New York to New Jersey in under three hours. Trudy accepts the challenge and easily completes it, securing the sponsorship. However, she must work with Wolf as her coach to finalize the arrangement. Accepting James's deal, Trudy sails to France with Wolf. At the inn, she meets other swimmers who are also preparing to cross the English Channel. When Benji, one of the swimmers, attempts to intimidate her upon her arrival, Trudy remains calm and eventually leaves the place. While she spends time there, Trudy trains for the Channel and gets to know Benji, who reveals that he has attempted the crossing 12 times and warns her about the challenges ahead. During her training sessions, Wolf restricts her diet, giving her very little to eat. Benji, who witnesses this, secretly provides her with proper meals to help maintain her strength. The next day, Benji gets ready to make his attempt at the crossing. He tells Trudy that if anything happens to him, 
she should honor him at his funeral. Meanwhile, Wolf shows his irritation at Trudy's defiance, convinced she will only swim seven miles before quitting. Moments after, a rescue team arrives to help Benji, who has collapsed in the water, his body half-frozen from the cold. Trudy notices Bill Afar witnessing the scene. In July 1926, Trudy prepares to attempt her crossing of the English Channel. Before she sets off, she receives a briefing on the rules. The swimmers must not be touched by their escorts or they will be disqualified. The event garners significant attention, and back in her hometown, her family, neighbors, and coach, Epi, listen to the radio broadcast from their respective places that covers Trudy's progress in the water. As Trudy swims, Wolf tries to slow her down with instructions, but she ignores him and continues pushing forward. He makes several attempts to distract her and undermine her efforts by giving her incorrect guidance. In a final bid to break her spirit, he hands her a bottle of tea mixed with medicine, causing her to lose her focus and ultimately losing the race after six miles. Seeing his plan work, he jumps into the water to assist Trudy back onto the ship. Meanwhile, back in her hometown, everyone loses hope after hearing that the mission has been called off just after a short distance into the swim. A few days later, as Trudy starts to recover, she asks the nurse to let her go home. To her surprise, the nurse informs her that her family has come to visit her instead. She sees her father and older sister approaching, and they embrace warmly. Henry apologizes for not supporting her during her attempt to cross the English Channel, but Trudy feels grateful to have him there now. The three of them sit down for lunch together when Bill suddenly arrives, praising Trudy for her efforts, but questions her failure. He hints at Coach Wolf's attempts to undermine her by trying to touch her during the swim. Trudy recalls how she started to feel ill after drinking the tea Wolf had given her and remembers he often carries pills to prevent seasickness. With this new information, Meg suggests they report the incident to the press. However, Bill points out that people might not believe a story from someone who did not succeed in the water. Instead, he offers to help Trudy move forward and prove herself and she agrees to accept his guidance. The next day, James and Turdy officially bid farewell to France and prepare to board the ship back to New York. Just as they step onto the deck, Turdy slips away and joins Henry, Meg, and Bill, who are waiting for her in a small boat nearby. They swiftly row back to Bill's Inn, nestled by the sea. With only three days before the crew realizes Turdy is missing, they gather around a table to plan their next attempt to cross the English Channel. Bill helps Trudy chart a course to the other side, encouraging her to use the current as a guide. As they work together, Trudy turns to him and asks him to do her a favor. She asks him not to let anyone pull her out of the water no matter what happens. She is determined to prove herself and risk everything, including her life. Bill hesitates as he knows the dangers that lie ahead and worries about her safety. After a moment, he reluctantly nods, understanding the fire in her spirit. After practice, Meg realizes that Turdy's swimsuit does not fit properly, so she starts preparing a new one to ensure Trudy can swim freely. On the ship, James searches for Trudy, who has an interview scheduled. When he knocks on her door and receives no answer, he opens her cabin only to find it empty. Concerned that she might have returned to France, he instructs his crew to check with the inn they stayed at to confirm her whereabouts. As news of her disappearance spreads, reporters gather at the shore, unaware that Trudy is gearing up to enter the water. Meanwhile, the radio broadcasts an announcement, revealing that Trudy is back at sea, ready for her second attempt to conquer the English Channel. As Trudy swims, a boat filled with reporters approaches too closely, disrupting her mission. Bill attempts to maintain a safe distance, but the reporters ignore his efforts, prompting him to fire a warning shot to keep them away and protect Trudy. During her swim, Trudy's goggles start to leak, so she throws them at the ship and continues without any visual aid. Meanwhile, in New York, Anna hears about the news from her neighbors and rushes to the NBC radio office to stay updated on the unfolding events. As Trudy continues her swim, 
the crew aboard the ship spots a large swarm of red jellyfish. Bill warns her to let her prepare the further moves. With determination and no other options, Trudy navigates the swarm, enduring the painful stings of the jellyfish, but manages to push through. Soon after, fatigue sets in, and she starts to float in the water. Seeing his daughter struggling, Henry decides to pull her back onto the ship, but Bill steps in. He argues that Trudy should swim for as long as she wants, offering his support and encouraging her to keep going. Overhearing their debate, Trudy swims closer to the ship and confidently asserts her choice to continue swimming further. Meanwhile, Meg works on repairing her goggles by melting candle wax together and tosses them to Trudy, urging her to stay focused and complete her mission. After eight hours of continuous swimming, Trudy reaches the halfway point of her journey, but her stamina starts to wane, and it is clear that she is becoming tired. Understanding her sister's nature, Meg jumps into the water, knowing how much Trudy hates to lose. Her presence boosts Trudy's spirits, and soon Trudy is feeling more energized. The two sisters swim together for a while, but eventually, the cold water takes its toll on Meg, and she can no longer continue. She climbs back onto the ship and orders some food for Trudy. Bill steps in to help, feeding Trudy and providing her with the energy she needs to keep going. As dusk settles in, a thick fog covers the area, and Bill realizes too late that their ship is too close to the shallow waters. He informs Henry that the ship can no longer guide Trudy, and notes that she will have to make the last five miles on her own. Concerned, Henry alerts Trudy, urging her to exit the water, fearing that the ship won't be able to assist her in the darkness and that she might lose her way in the fog. Determined to reach the finish line just five miles ahead, Trudy focuses on navigating through the shallows despite the challenges. As the ship turns back, Trudy continues to paddle through the ocean. Approaching the shallow waters, she encounters challenges similar to those faced by previous swimmers. The waves from the Atlantic crash against the northern sea, slowing her progress. While she manages to resist being pulled further by the current, she soon becomes disoriented struggling to find her direction. As fatigue sets in, she fights against the rising water, determined not to give in. In the NBC office, Anna and Henry Jr. receive updates about Trudy being lost in the shallow water for hours. Hearing this news, Anna breaks down and begins praying for her daughter's safety, while tension builds among the viewers. Bill, Henry, and Meg reach the shore and begin searching for Trudy, hoping she has made it back. However, with no signs of her arrival, they feel a growing sense of tension, worried that she may have lost her way in the darkness. As they consider the challenges Trudy might be facing, Meg comes up with a solution. Together with Henry, Bill, and others on the shore, she lights bonfires at intervals to help guide Trudy back. Meanwhile, as Trudy struggles to stay afloat, she turns and catches sight of the beach, where the flickering flames of the bonfires become visible. Filled with renewed energy, Trudy pushes forward. Trudy swims as fast as she can while the residents on the shore wait anxiously for her arrival. At last, Bill notices distinct ripples in the water and realizes that it is Turdy. Meg, spotting her sister, starts calling out and cheering her on. Soon, a crowd of residents gathers on the shore, all eager to support her. At last, Trudy reaches the beach and feels the sand beneath her. In disbelief, she makes her way to the shore, where her father and sister await her proudly, greeted by a large group of people applauding her accomplishment. In the NBC office, Trudy's mother and brother anxiously await updates. They finally receive the news that Trudy has successfully reached England. The reporter announces that Trudy is now recognized as one of the greatest athletes in history. Meanwhile, Wolf feels frustrated, realizing that Trudy has accomplished what he could not. In New York, Trudy is welcomed by a massive crowd celebrating her incredible achievement. A grand parade awaits, where she rides alongside her family and coach. Reporters note that it is the largest parade ever held for an athlete. In the final scene, it is revealed that Trudy swam the English Channel in an impressive 14 hours and 31 minutes.
shattering the men's record by nearly two hours and transforming the landscape for women in sports. Although she loses her hearing, she dedicates herself to teaching deaf children how to swim. Trudy passes away at the age of 98 in 2003, leaving behind a remarkable legacy.